Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on in the house. Come on in the house. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to our virtual services today. I'm Pastor Dale Fontno, New Life Church of God. And I'm so glad that you have tuned in this morning as we gather on this second Sunday in the month of uh, January, second Sunday of this new year. And as we welcome you into our homes, I'm so grateful that your home is filled with the word of God this morning. Your home is filled with all that the Lord has in store for you. And uh, as others are coming in, we want to extend a welcome. If ever there was a time that uh, we need a word from the Lord, it's on a Sunday like today, a week like today, a week like the week that we have come through. And even this morning, there are those who are grieving, those who are mourning, and um, we just bring and offer the comfort of the Holy Spirit to those that are gathered and uh, those that are looking for hope. Today's message, our time together today, there's simply one word. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. If ever there was a word to fill the earth today, it would be the word Jesus, the name Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And so as you uh, gather in this morning and prepare yourselves for the message, um, even as we ready ourselves to uh, speak the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, even in times like these, we need a Savior, and Jesus truly is our Savior. And so we celebrate him, we look into his word, we look into who he is to strengthen us and to bless us on today. We want to have our morning prayer this morning as our message uh, today is entitled Jesus. And uh, we are mindful of the strength of the word that the Lord brings unto us. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. The Apostle Paul writes, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Thanks be to God. And so even as we gather today and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer today, there's a wonderful power in prayer. And I want to remind the people of God of the privilege, of the opportunity, and of the power we have in prayer. As we have been giving the assignment as the body of Christ, we gathered in our midweek time together on Zoom, and our focus was on prayer, praying. The church has been called to pray. God has positioned the body of Christ for times like these, as we pray on our knees and when we arise, God gives us guidance and direction. Let's pray this morning. Father, we love you and we're grateful to worship you today, Lord God. We thank you that we can call on your name. I thank you that you have loved us so much that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that we may have an opportunity to believe in him. Jesus, we believe in you. If ever there was a time that we needed a Savior, truly it is today. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer today. There are those that are gathered who are discouraged, those that are gathered that are in the midst of unbelief. We know that we gather in a nation that's bruised, that's torn, that's wondering. I thank you, God, for giving Jesus Christ unto us that we can proclaim him in days like this. Jesus, be our strength, be our answer, 
be our everything today, Lord Jesus. And so even as we gather together today, we bring before you, Lord, the needs of the hour. There are those that are struggling today with health issues. We speak and release the word of healing by the stripes that Jesus bore on his back. We have access to healing. There are those that are gathered today who are mourning, who are in grief. Holy Spirit, be a comfort. Be present, Lord God, even in this season, even in this time. Father, as we join in together today and we pray one for another, I pray that my brothers and sisters in Christ may be strengthened today, that they may be encouraged, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for our world today. We pray for our nation and we pray for all of this nation's leaders today, this hour. I thank you, O oh Lord, that you are right there with them and we welcome you and invite you to give them, as the scripture said this morning, a spirit of wisdom and revelation that they may know you better. We need leadership in days like today, O oh God. I thank you for leaders in the church. I thank you for pastors, for men and women who are meeting and presenting and preaching to their churches today. May men and women who lead churches have a special anointing today to be the leader that you have called them to be in critical times like these. Father, we pray for the body of Christ all over the world. May we not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, knowing that it is the power of God unto salvation. Hear our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen today. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're going to get into the word for today. Today's message and even as the week progressed, the message is not what I had uh, scheduled or planned in looking at the second Sunday of the year, but we are in critical times today. And I want the people of the flock, the people of new life proper, the people of new life online to be mindful of who Jesus is, that we live in this world and we are not helpless and we're not hopeless. Hear ye the word of the Lord this morning. As we read from Colossians chapter one, we drop down and read the concluding verses of this passage, begin reading with verse 24 and down to the end of this text of scripture, verse 29. Our message is prompted from that 27th verse. Paul writes to the church at Colossae, Now I rejoice in what I'm suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions. For the sake of his body, which is the church, I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. Verse 27, to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Welcome church. Welcome those of you who are curious about the things of Jesus Christ. And as we uh, make reference and to include who Jesus is, this is the Lord's Day. We gather on this Sunday. Um, Sunday, we recall that it was on the first day of the week that Jesus Christ rose again from the grave, proclaiming this life unto us. And so today of all days brings a wonderful opportunity to lift up the message of hope, to lift up a message of hope. It's a message which refreshes our life. It refreshes all those who hear this message of hope. 
Yes, a today like a day like today when our nation is confused and and mourning and trying to figure out everything by what has happened in Washington D.C. We gather around the name of Jesus, and it's the name of Jesus. In that name, we find hope. And so, in the midst of all that happens in life, all of the hurts and all of the setbacks and all of the struggles that you and I have in the midst of the disappointments and in the midst of all the responsibilities that you and I have in the midst of all our connectedness with life and with our schedules please uh, allow today to remind us of a wonderful message of hope in the midst of it all today reminds us of the wonderful message of hope whether you want to do right or whether you don't want to do right or if you want right things to happen to you this message of hope is for us it empowers us to live through days like today it empowers us to arise on every tomorrow that the lord gives unto us that we can celebrate that we can be anchored in him anchored in something that really counts and really uh, strengthens us this message of hope in jesus christ it's an, it empowers us as we move from day to day through all the mazes of life and we know that these last 10 months have presented us a lot of different mazes and so as we are mindful that we can live in the maze of life that we live in day in and day out it's because of Jesus Christ you know I'm utterly amazed at the differences that exist in the world and the older I get I am mindful uh, of, uh, of, of how to appreciate differences the Lord uh, has given us life and we are all different. There are differences even in our families. We are so different in our families. Uh, even though we may have common features, uh, there's differences in our personalities, difference uh, in, uh, in how we respond, differences all over the place. And so it's just simply amazing the differences that we have in our families, in our communities, differences that we may see and observe on our jobs, differences that exist uh, um, even in our marriages, in our communities, in our nations, even in our churches. There are differences even in Christians. And so therefore, when we think about all of these differences, what is it? Who is it that can hold us together? In the midst of all of our differences, in the midst of all the rancor that goes on, who, what is it that can keep us together? Who can keep Christians together? Who can hold a nation together? Who is it that can hold churches together? You got it. Nobody but Jesus Christ. No one but Jesus Christ. He is the one that can hold us together when the going gets tough. He can hold us together when there are all kinds of different opinions that are out there. Jesus Christ can hold us together. Who you thought can hold us together? You thought politics can hold us together? No, no, no. We're, we're seeing that lived out now. You, you think a governor can hold us together? You think a parish president can hold us together? You think the president of the United States can hold us together? You think our economy can hold us together? You think an oil industry can hold us together? You think Pastor Dale can hold us together? No, no. It's no one but Jesus Christ. And we need to be mindful of that in days like today, in times like the times that we're living in now. You know, I'm finding that we have to relearn how to talk to one another. We have to relearn that. We live in a society, we live in a culture that knows how to talk at one another 
but knows not how to talk to one another. When the scripture says, come, let us reason together. Let's take on the spirit of Christ. Even as we may disagree about some things, we can still talk to one another and not at one another. You know, I'm not even talking about those who are not followers of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about followers of Jesus Christ who have to relearn how to talk to one another and not at one another. There is a spirit that's in our culture that is ripping the very foundations of anything that is solid and whole and stable. It's ripping it apart. Husbands and wives do not know how to talk to one another. They talk at one another. Different generations within a church no longer know how to talk to one another. They talk at one another. And so we must lead in these times of great division in knowing how to talk to one another. We must learn how to lead and not to follow and be taking up in emotion field social unrest Jesus Christ becomes the significant piece of us learning how to talk to one another and I'm not saying we can't have emotion but our emotion must be informed and ruled by the Spirit of Christ even as that calling calls us to um, uh, to understand that we've been called to reconciliation. We are ambassadors of reconciliation, not ambassadors of division, but ambassadors of reconciliation. And so we're learning how to lift up those messages that pull us together and not divide us apart. You know, the trick, one of the tricks of the devil is to convince us that we can exist as detached pieces that are just drifting and flying through the air. The enemy has sold us a raw bill of goods that we can be detached from one another. That it's okay for us to build walls between us and for those that are on this side and those that are on that side. The enemy has convinced us that we can be divided because of political differences and political parties. The enemy has sold us a cheapened bill of goods. Everybody doing their own things. Where has that gotten us? Where are we headed? Where are you headed as you have allowed maybe your life and your relationships to exist as being detached? You do your own thing. You do your thing. We're mad at you. I'm mad at you. I'm mad at you. You're my family. You're my blood, but I'm still mad at you. You're my brother and sister in Christ, but I'm mad at you. We need one that can pull us together, even in the midst of discourse that we may have, even in the midst of those things that are not priority that we may disagree on. So therefore, as we look at our own personal driftings, that we are independent of everything else and independent of anyone else, and we think our own thoughts and nobody else can convince me otherwise. And so today I turn our attention into the gospel. I turn our attention into the presence of Jesus Christ. And listen, Jesus Christ is God's perfect pitch. Yes, Jesus Christ is God's perfect pitch for times like today. Listen, there is a, 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 a tuning fork. Uh, when there are, uh, or when, when one is tuning a piano, a real acoustic piano, there is a tuning fork that the master tuner uses. And when he strikes that, 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 that fork, that tuning fork, it gives out a perfect pitch to a note. And so it enables uh, uh, the piano tuner to tune the piano. 
when there is a band or an orchestra that's getting ready to play, getting ready to uh, play a song, every instrument is tuned according to that pitch, according to that tuning fork, that when that fork is struck, it makes a vibrating noise, a sound. And when you play your instrument, if your instrument is flat or if your instrument is sharp, you have to make adjustments. You have to make adjustments uh, unto your instrument. And so therefore in, it enables entire bands and orchestras to play beautiful music in pitch without there being some racket and some noise. Somebody is sharp and a whole section is flat in the sound there. Jesus becomes God's tuning fork that perfect pitch that when the when jesus is struck we know how to begin to align our lives align our attitudes align our dispositions and our thoughts to jesus christ and so therefore when that tuning when that tuning fork is struck and it is heard then everybody has to take note everybody has to line up their instruments and today, my friends, our lives are our instruments. It's what we're presenting unto the Lord. And so we're here today to strike the name of Jesus so that he can be lifted up. And when he is lifted up, he draws all people unto him. When he is lifted up, he does a wonderful drawing that our lives can come into line, align with what he is saying, with what he is doing. And we lift Jesus up, not as a trinket today, but we lift Jesus up as the embodiment of God himself, the embodiment of God's love for us. Several years ago, I had the privilege of uh, touring Europe, a few countries in Europe. And uh, uh, as a part of the tour, we toured some of the great cathedrals that were there in, uh, in Europe, some of the great churches. And all of these great churches that the tour guide took us to, all of them had a trinket shop in the back. They had a souvenir shop in the back of the sanctuary, not in another room, not in another building, but in the back of the sanctuary itself, there was a trinket shop. And, and as the tour guide was telling us about these great cathedrals, he was saying that church gatherings were a thing of the past, that people basically claim, came to church two times in their lives, one to be christened as a child and the second time to be married as an adult. And those were the two times that people would come to the to, to church. And, and other than that, uh, it was just uh, a museum. The church was there as a museum. And so when we can recognize uh, the, the, the calling that you and I have to lift Jesus up, that Jesus is more than a trinket, but Jesus is the hope of glory. Jesus is our savior. Jesus is an incredible Lord. And we recognize what he has done for us, how he paid the price for our sin, and we can worship him. And Jesus becomes more than a trinket in a trinket shop. He becomes more than just a piece of jewelry that we may wear around our necks. Jesus becomes everything unto us. And so we understand that he has freed us from a lifestyle of sin. He has freed us from a lifestyle of death. He has become our resurrection. He is our glorious Lord. He defeated death. He defeated sin. He defeated Satan. He defeated condemnation. And so as we come today, we can celebrate the fact that our lives are to be called about, about Jesus and everything that we do, every action that we take is to be about Jesus. He's our glorious Christ. He is our limitless Christ. He is our amazing and incredible Christ. He is marvelous. He is stunning. He is staggering. He is majestic. He is spectacular. And we recognize that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has chosen 
to place all of his fullness in us. Glory to God. That's worth our worship and praise in the midst of all of our flaws, in the midst of all of our troubles. Jesus Christ has chosen to place all of his fullness within me, within you, inside of you, as you make a confession of Jesus Christ, as you empty yourself and fill your lives with Jesus Christ. Whether you're eight or whether you're 80 years old, Jesus has chosen to fill us with all of him. That 27th verse of our text of scripture in Colossians chapter one, to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Friends, that's love. Friends, that's insight. Friends, that's a great understanding that all of our lives can be impacted by Jesus Christ. So undeserving that we are, but he has chosen people like you, people like me. He's chosen people like us to strike his name in the world today, to strike his name that others can see anything different from this pitch is sharp, is flat, is off, is not sounding right. And you and I have an opportunity to strike the name of Jesus Christ. First John 4 and 16 lets us know that we believe, that we know in the love that God has for us, that he's giving us an opportunity to be filled with more and more of Jesus Christ. It is a love that came not in the form of some abstract principle, but it actually came as a, as a person. It came as somebody who was real, somebody that, was, uh, that, that, that we could see and to know and to understand. First John chapter four, verse nine. And so we don't worship any other person. We worship Jesus. Our worship is in Jesus every day, whether it's a troubling day, whether it's a day that um, that everything goes well. We don't worship any other person. We don't worship a pastor. We don't worship a president. We worship Jesus Christ. We give our full allegiance unto Jesus Christ and unto his righteousness. And so therefore, when we can understand that, we can know that the Bible just doesn't promise us eternal life. It offers us a gift of life that's lived through Jesus Christ. And he, he becomes a tuning fork that when we sound the name of Jesus, our lives have to measure up. Our lives has to go, have to go deeper and deeper in him. The greatest truth ever told sums up every book that is written on Jesus. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. What an incredible love. What an incredible understanding that Jesus Christ can become our life. He becomes our all in all. When everything around us seems to be caving and collapsing, our life is built upon the rock of Jesus Christ. And that's who we give our allegiance to. That's who we are unapologetic about in serving and honoring Jesus Christ and living our lives with that kind of love, not living our lives with a hatred, not living our lives with such a negative discourse, but to understanding that I'm letting my light shine. I'm letting my light shine. I'm influencing the darkness of the world. I'm influencing the powers of darkness by allowing the light of the Lord Jesus Christ to shine in me. What an impactful transformational difference that we are making. You know, we here at New Light believe in the power of transformation. Our mission is all about the transforming power of Jesus Christ, a transforming power that cannot be legislated. It cannot be something that is forced upon you, but there is a moving in the spirit. And we believe that we're living in a day that there is an opportunity for great revival, 
to manifest itself in the land that we live in, in our communities. It's a wonderful opportunity for churches to arise and to shine and not to be caught up in anything but Jesus Christ and his righteousness and his word and what he is desiring to do. What a wonderful opportunity that men and women like I have to come behind whatever pulpit we have in our homes or in our church buildings and proclaim the Lordship of Jesus Christ. To proclaim that Jesus is Lord and to understand that as we lift him up, he will do the drawing. As we lift his truth up, he will do the drawing. He will convince. He will convict those of their sin. Oh, we understand that. That's our calling. Our calling has not come to condemn the world. Remember, John chapter 3 lets us know Jesus did not come to, the, to condemn the world, but to save the world. And friends, you and I, part of New Life Church, a part of the church, the body of Christ at large. We have not come to condemn our world, but we have come to lift up Jesus, that Jesus can save, Jesus can influence. Our message is not one of condemnation. I know the church has become experts in condemnation. Oh, we can, we can point out the worst of them. We are experts, but that's not our calling. That's, that, that, that's on the back burner of what the church has been called to do. The church has been called to lift Jesus up, to lift him up. I know we see a lot of wickedness in our world and in our nation today. And yes, we can be prophetic and to point to the point, to the fact of wickedness. But our number one pointer is to be Jesus. Point to Jesus, lift Jesus up and Jesus will do the drawing. That's our calling as the body of Christ. That's our calling as the Christian church to lift Jesus up and not to be so busily engaged in condemnation. Those around you who are living in darkness should be seeing light in you. Oh, I know many of you have the prophetic call to call out sin, to call out wickedness. I praise the Lord for your giftedness. But understand the number one purpose of the body of Christ, of the church, is to lift Jesus up. He will do the drawing. He will do the saving. And so therefore, we allow Jesus Christ to be alive on the inside of our lives, to control us to help us make sense. Let Jesus be the filter of all the news that goes on, of all the things that happens. Because Jesus is our filter, we can weep for our nation. We can weep for those that are caught up in some other type of agenda. We can weep for our nation, for those that, that take on. We can have a, a, a sharpened eye and a greater understanding of what's going on. That's what the body of Christ is to do. Even in our emotion, our emotion is filtered through Jesus Christ, that our actions would be actions that will lift him up. Our voices will be voices that will lift Jesus up to lift his word up, to lift his righteousness up. And yes, we've been called to love. We've been called to love people to Christ. Again, the enemy is doing everything he can to keep us talking at one another and not talking to one another. May the eyes of my understanding be enlightened May the eyes of your understanding be opened that we can know how to love those who are confused. Love those who are misinformed. Love those who are not living in the truth. Love those who are not understanding what the truth of the word of God is all about. To love those that need to be loved to Christ. To take them and to say, it's about Jesus. Don't be so confused in how you live, in your anger, in your misinformation about some things. I want to point you to a greater way, into a greater life, into a greater understanding. That's our calling as believers to allow Jesus Christ to control our ideas, to control our lifestyles, 
to control what's going on in our lives and to live for him. That's our calling. I want to pray with the body of Christ today as we've been called to weep, as we've been called to understand that uh, we can live our lives in great understandings of what the Lord has in store for us. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord help us in our lives as we live in such a time as this. God has positioned the church to minister to lives, to minister into the wounds of what's going on. May the Lord bless us and may the Lord help us as we live our lives for Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord strengthen us. Indeed, in all of our lives, to God be the glory. Let Jesus Christ live on the inside of us. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven to allow Jesus Christ to live in us. That he can reign and he can rule in our lives. Let's pray together. Father, we give you thanks and praise, oh God, for this day. I thank you, Lord God, that you have our lives on your mind. Thank you, Lord God, that even in the midst of your exposing, you're exposing more and more things in our lives. May our heart's desire be only to serve you and to honor you. May we live by the Spirit of Christ as we become parts of not what divides us, but what can pull us together, O oh Lord. Pull us together in ways and times that we could never imagine, O oh God. Hear our prayer today. There are those who need a greater infilling of your spirit and your power in divisive times like today. Fill us afresh and anew, O oh God. May our ministry be about a ministry of reconciliation. Even as we come against spiritual warfare and idolatry, may the Spirit of Christ rule in our lives. May it rest in our lives. May it always abide in our lives. Bless us. Help us this day, O oh God, as we pray for our nation. May our nation bless God. May our nation comes to come to you, O oh God, to worship you, to cry out to you for guidance, for direction, O oh Lord. We pray for our nation. We even take this time as the body of Christ to pray for our nation. We pray for the current administration as they transition. Be with them. May hearts be filled with love. May hearts be filled with kindness and in care. Even as we pray for the preparation of the upcoming administration, O oh God. May their hearts be filled with with love may they seek your face O oh lord in all of their lives and all of their legislating and all of their preparation may it be about you O oh lord we're doing the work of the church the church is not on hold we're moving forward and fulfilling the calling that you have for us have your way lord jesus in jesus name we pray amen 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 May the church say amen. May the church say amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence today. As we have joined together, as we have joined together to be about what the Lord Jesus has in store. And our lives are all about Jesus and uh, we allow Jesus Christ to be lived in our lives over and over and over again. As we fall in love with Jesus and who he's calling us to be, we bless his name indeed. So glad that you had an opportunity to tune in today. As our message has been all about Jesus, our calling has been all about Jesus. May the Lord Jesus bless you indeed as we move forward in this coming week. Be strengthened. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Our hope is not necessarily in a government. Our hope is in the governor of the government, Jesus Christ. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And we shall call his name Wonderful Counselor. Yes, 
Yes, it's about Jesus, uh, the influence that Jesus Christ has upon lives today. And so don't be fearful, be strengthened, be prayerful in all that we do. So glad that you've been able to tune in today. I don't know who Abdullah has been, but we rebuke that particular calling and we'll get him off as uh, we just have opportunities to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, again, uh, just giving you some more highlights. Next week, next Sunday, we're scheduled for our next drive-in services, weather permitting, the 17th day of, um, of January. January this year is moving right on. We're going through some crisis times with the coronavirus, COVID-19, impacting lives, taking lives, lives that are struggling. We're praying. We're putting lives and families under covering as we're covering you in prayer as we live being being cautious as we live being safe becomes the ultimate peace in that and uh so we're, we're just asking for the grace of god to be with us and uh we're grateful for those of you who are doing better who are feeling better we're going to do that let's be safe as we continue to live let's pray for our medical field uh, those that are busy at work, we're going to pray that uh, they would be strengthened, that they would be anointed, that they would be compassionate, that Lord would give greater wisdom. We're praying for the rollout of the vaccine. We're praying that information can be shared in a way that truth becomes priority in all of that as we are praying uh, for that. And um, we're going to bless the name of the Lord uh, through that. Uh, this coming, coming Wednesday, we're scheduled to have our Zoom. Who knows where the Lord will lead? We know that at the beginning of the year, we focus on spiritual health. That may be our focus. Um, we may have another time of prayer that we pray for our nation uh, and uh, for our leaders. We need leaders. We need leadership. We need uh, those in leadership who are displaying character. And you're called to be a leader. You're leading in your home as you're gathered in your home. Be a leader. Be persons of character. And that can become contagious that our children can see and to know and to understand what leadership is, what character is. So again, Wednesday night, uh, locally, we'll continue to pray for our students as they are, uh, are roughing it out, going through this school year in uh, various forms and fashions. Let's keep praying for our nation. Let's continue to intercede for our area, uh, believing God's best for them. So happy new year to everybody again. Let's be safe. Let's be healthy. Let's lift up the name of Jesus, that name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus. Every knee is bowing. Every tongue is confession, confessing. So in next, until next time, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord strengthen you. As you place your hope, your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Until next time, we're so grateful that you tuned in. Thank you for your financial support. As you can give, as you see online with this message, there are various ways that you can uh, support the, the work here, the ministry here at New Life Church. We thank you. We are blessed to know that you are blessing those that you uh, hear and listen to and receive spiritual strength and encouragement from. May the Lord bless you as we gather in our fellowship area. We're not going to call it the parking lot today because it's too cold. Our friends to the north look like you're going to have snow sometimes today. We'll see what comes in our neck of the wood. But the Lord bless you from Arizona, California, Shreveport, Maryland, Florida. May the Lord bless you as we originate from Palmetto, Louisiana. The Lord reigns and rules. The Lord bless you. Until next time.